Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. And as you can see, I'm sitting in my studio. These are some of my paintings behind me, where I also write books. And so when it comes to the idea of free speech and artistic expression, I have a point of view. And uh, let, me, let me start by saying that I remember an incident when the singer Sinead O'Connor more or less had her career destroyed by going on Saturday Night Live and tearing a picture of the Pope in half. And everyone was aghast. Oh my God, what has she done? Desecration. Roman Catholic groups were up in arms. She should be banned from the media, thrown out of her record contracts, and indeed her career more or less faded away. In hindsight, after all the stories came out of Ireland where she was raised about the homes for unwed mothers and the number of children who were killed there and died there of malnutrition, the way women were treated and all the rest of it, she was completely right. She had been abused in one of those homes. She knew people who stayed there their whole lives. The oppressive religion that was part of the Roman Catholic tradition of Ireland was exposed again and again and again. The Irish people stopped going to church as much as they had before, and basically everybody came to her conclusion. There had been a massive cover-up in terms of child abuse and woman abuse and all the rest of the sins of the Roman Catholic Church for decades, eons, centuries. And that abuse still goes on today with the abuse of women and the, the abuse, sexual abuse of children and so forth, the story we all know so well. Just remember her career was ruined because she tore a picture of the Pope in half as part of her musical act on Saturday Night Live. Update to the present. We have a, a number of stories coming out of small liberal arts colleges across the country where predominantly white uh, administrators on the liberal side, the left wing of, of American politics are very sensitive towards the wants and desires of religious students on their campus, whether that's Jewish groups or Christian groups, and especially more recently evangelical groups that have been protesting that they're not treated fairly, and Muslim groups and individuals who take umbrage at seeing a picture of the prophet, or, for instance, recently demanded that the school cancel an art show by an Iranian woman artist protesting what's going on in Iran, the hanging and the rape of women and protesters by making art that the Islamic and Muslim students on that one particular little liberal arts college, um, as Michelle Goldberg, who I know personally and like, wrote about in the New York Times um, and tried to censor the show. In fact, they even veiled one of her pictures, an unintended parody of doing exactly what the mullahs in Iran are doing. We have a choice to make, whether it is when Sarah Huckabee and DeSantis and Trump call for the rolling back of the woke movement by censoring books on black history and all the rest of it, or whether it's Muslim students on small liberal arts co college campuses trying to guilt trip the white administrators into censoring art in much the way the Taliban would uh, in, in Afghanistan, where in fact those students, especially the women, would not have anything to complain about because they've canceled all education as being an insult to the prophet. Let's face it, liberals are uncomfortable with disrespecting anything much allowed, especially religion. We believe in this idea that we all have a right to believe what we want. Very true. We all have a right to to live the way we want to in our own community is very true. But what happens when the very idea of free speech itself or art or expression becomes a threat to either the right or the left on the extremes? And you have this kind of pushback. The Sinead O'Connor rips the picture of the Pope. She has to be taken off the air. Uh, Liberal Arts College puts up a picture by an Iranian woman artist protesting the Islamic regime in Iran with pictures that some Muslim students on the campus find offensive to their religion. Is the job of art, communication, writing, and literature, and education to protect the sensibilities of the most fragile people on our campuses from the right, who are offended by the presence of trans students and groups on the campus and want to eliminate them, or from the left, who are offended on behalf of a tiny, Muslim group on a campus that doesn't want a particular piece of art put up? Or do we have to have a higher standard in America? My point of view is that the United States and our freedoms and free speech are not 
all about not offending people. My memoir, Crazy for God, was attacked by the religious right. Magazines like Christianity Today went after me, called me a spoiled brat for talking about the fact that our movement in the 1970s and 80s to force women to bear children by canceling their rights of, to abortion, they found that offensive and they attacked me. Fine, that's the price of admission for making art. So I'm not thin-skinned about stuff like that. I've been on the edge of a lot of controversial subjects, but I am starting to get very wary of people who say they're on my side of the politics in academic institutions who are overly sensitive to the wants and desires and cover their butts all the time by either canceling art shows or firing a professor who shows a picture of the prophet. And I am as wary of that as I am of Sarah Huckabee getting on television and calling woke people extremists for doing nothing more than trying to be decent and compassionate to others. I think if we're not careful, our idea of all living in our own little bubble and only hearing what we want to hear is going to spread to actual censorship from the left and the right at their extremes. I don't think most Americans are there or most Muslims in America are there. They're glad enough not to be living in Iran, where, by the way, those kind of sensibilities are protected because you were executed for blasphemy if you cross that line or stoned to death in, in Afghanistan or beheaded in Saudi Arabia. Do we really want to go back to a place where Sinead O'Connor can be banned from television and have her career ruined for the very reasonable act of tearing a picture of the Pope in half, a Pope that presided over her mother being treated like garbage and she herself being treated like garbage by being put in a home for unwed mothers and persecuted? Is that where we belong or do we want freedom of expression? The left and the right had better consider this because I think all of our interests as Americans are served by going to a higher standard of freedom than that of the left or the right. It is not a question about not offending other people. Art is about being offensive in a quest to say things other people sometimes don't want to hear. Or am I mistaken? Am I just some old white guy spouting off about things I don't understand? Maybe. If that's your position, say so. I won't be offended. Call me a son of a bitch. Call me an ignorant old fool. Fine. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's good. Rip my picture in half. I don't care. But what I do care about is that we have a choice in front of us, that the left and the right seem to be colluding to narrow the def definition of what is acceptable speech. The right doesn't want us to do black history. The right doesn't want gay people and trans people to have the freedom to choose their pronouns and to be spoken of in a polite manner that I totally support. But on the left, we have people who coddle the sensibilities of religion in a way that I think is ridiculous, given that religion has a horrible track record. I can't think of one Islamic ruled country I wanna live in. I can't think of ever wanting to go back and live in Ireland of the baby care and, and mother care centers for quote, unwed mothers that persecuted and killed people and buried the infants secretly by throwing them down a well in the backyard. If you wanna go back to that or defend that, fine, not me. Let's rip the bandaid off and just say it. Fundamentalist religion in all iterations, whether it's Hindu nationalism or evangelical white Christianity and it's anti-gay, homophobic, anti-trans stand, or whether it's Islamic students on American liberal campuses demanding that their religion somehow be protected from critique or from offense, this is not America. America is rooted in the enlightenment and the enlightenment and the ideas that came out of the Italian Renaissance, where by the way, Savonarola, a monk, called for the burning of art that he found offensive to Roman Catholic tradition, and there were bonfires of pictures being burnt by people, even like Botticelli, who was caught up in that cult of picture burning to protect the sensibilities of Roman Catholics. This is an old battle. It has nothing to do with woke. It has nothing to do with left, right, or Trump. It goes way back, and that is, do we give religion a special pass? to be especially respected, whether it is respected by the Supreme Court that stops someone from freely having a gay wedding and being able to have a cake made by somebody who's supposedly serving their community, but they say, oh no, they, their religious re liberty should protect them from having to bake a cake for a gay couple. Bullshit. 
either the law applies to all of us and we have freedom of speech or we don't. And it's time these little precious liberal colleges with easily offended students rein in their attack on free speech. And it's time that the right wing stand up and just say it. Are we Americans? Are we free? Or are we scared shitless like Sarah Huckabee that somehow a gay or a trans person will be respected and treated with dignity because it goes against our religion? To hell with that. Religion should not get any special treatment or respect in our culture. That's my point of view. If you hate me for it, rip up my picture online. One other thing related to my own work, you know, you see a picture behind me here, and I, I just want to read you the title of that. Um, I painted it in 2017, uh, soon after Trump was elected. And I was painting a lot of paintings with Pinocchio dolls, sort of about liars. Uh, and the title of this one behind me is on Inauguration Day 2017, God tried to punish Donald Trump by showering him with French carbon steel knives, Pinocchio dolls, assorted rubber ducks, and pink cyclamens, but inexplicably, in a fit of gross divine incompetence, missed Trump, Trump by miles and crippled an American evangelical tourist visiting the Wailing Wall in Israel as she posed for a picture. So that is the the picture right behind me here. And um, I just want to show it to you a little bit uh, more clearly so you can see it. If I can just take it down, this is the picture. Um, and, you know, I gave it a facetious title that um, I can imagine would have infuriated evangelical students at some college and had them calling for the picture to be censored because it triggered whatever. But the point is, you know, this is what art is about. And whether you like me or this painting or not, I just want to rest my case and say, listen, everything in terms of communication stops if we have to be polite about religion. Thank you. My name is Frank Schaefer.